lucky enough to spend a few minutes here talking with Sarah Pompiano, a professional triathlete. How are you, Sarah? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Adam. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, really important topic, topic this time of year. We're going to be talking about goal setting. Uh, but before we do, uh, why don't we take a look back at 2016? I saw you have, had about seven races on your schedule. Uh, how did things go for you? Yeah, on the whole, I was really happy with my season. Um, I started out my year in Monterey, Mexico, where I was fourth, which um, I actually was quite pleased with in terms of my hit out for the year. I, I think it's hard doing your first race of the season. You never really quite know where you're at. And and so I was I was pretty happy with that overall and then backed that up with a win at New Orleans. And after that, I actually ended up having a, a little bit of an injury, which um, disrupted my season. Um, and I just had to reshuffle things around a little bit. So between kind of the middle of April through um, the end of July or middle of July, I didn't race and was just kind of healing myself and <clears throat> getting myself back to back to healthy and um, then ended up winning Ironman Vineman at the end of July, which was great. That was a, a really great race for me and um, actually was a race I even, you know, with Kona at the end of the year, I, I felt great about how I executed that race. It was probably one of my best races that I've ever done. Um, so that was great. And then um, went into Kona, placed seventh again for the second year in a row, and then um, ended my year at Ironman Western Australia, where I had won the year before and was really hoping to go and defend my title. And I ended up finishing third, but um, it was a really close race amongst the top three women. And, and I did go under nine hours for the first time, which was great. Congratulations. Seems like a pretty successful year overall. Yeah, um, so looking forward to 2017, uh, it's time to set goals. You probably have already started planning some of that. What's, can you talk us through a little bit about your process for goal planning? Sure. Um, you know, in general, pretty much since I started doing triathlon and since I started racing professionally, I've had sort of this one big long-term goal in mind, pie in the sky goal, but that is to, to be world champion and to win the Ironman World Championships. And so everything I do on a year over year basis and all of the progress we make, make is always with that end goal in mind. But on a um, year to year basis, you really have to just take a step back and um, kind of assess where you're at, assess how things went the year before and, and learn from the experiences that you had and then use that to formulate what your strategy and your goals are going to be for the, for the coming year. And, um, so, you know, at the beginning of my career, obviously, I knew I wasn't going to be winning Kona anytime soon. I wasn't going to be in a place to contend for, um, for the win anytime soon. And so, you know, my goals were to develop my swim. And so there was a huge focus on my on developing my swim. And then, um, you know, about two years ago, we actually switched that focus to really focusing on developing my bike and my run strength, um, which are actually strengths of mine. But what we felt was we had committed a significant amount of time to developing the swim. And now it was really about focusing and honing in on on my strengths. And so we switched those that focus. Yeah. And then um, going into 2016, for me, they, I had a few big goals. One of them was to go under nine hours, which I did at Ironman Western Australia. Um, one of them was a podium at Kona, which I, I did not achieve. Um, and then the other was to, you know, to continue sort of winning Ironmans, winning 70.3s, and to be on the podium and, and be consistent with my racing. And so you know, I felt pretty good about that. And so – we look back at 2016 and we say, okay, well, what went really well? What went wrong? What do we think, where do we think that we could be better? And as I look to 2017, you know, my goal of winning Kona becomes more and more realistic and something that we focus more and more on. And, um, and so this year, you know, A, I think focusing on bike strength is gonna be key for me. Um, I need to be in a position where even on an off day, I'm still riding better than, than most people. And so, you know, with that, we are creating a specific plan around bike strength and things that worked really well for me, for example, doing bike trainer sessions were was really effective for me last year and sometimes doing double days on, on the bike trainer and riding up to, 
you know, five or six hours a day on the bike trainer, it was really effective and, and helped me develop power. Doing strength training was huge for me last year in developing both power on the bike and also um, stride efficiency in my run. So we'll continue with that and, you know, really putting a big focus on that. And then for me with my run, just generally speaking, if you can run under three hours um, in the marathon, in Ironman, you're likely to, and you can, you know, have a strong ride, you're likely going to be in a good position to contend for a podium position in Kona. So, you know, we think about that and think about just kind of the evolution. And, and so then you break it down to, to smaller goals in terms of what you want to achieve when, because you can't be super, super focused the entire season. You have yeah. to think about different ramp ups. You can only really peak one or two times a year. And so you, you, know, you need to make sure that you're not fatiguing your body too much and you want to come into, into peak form at certain times in the season. And so, um, you know, that's another thing that we think about is how much rest do I need and, and things like that. So, you know, all that is to say that, you know, I have this big long-term goal, which is, which is Kona and to win Kona, but every year you have to kind of chip away a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And so there has to be these small, smaller goals that would might be a yearly goal. And then within that yearly goal, there has to be monthly or quarterly goals yeah. that, that you set that you yeah. want to achieve. And so where I'm at right now in my season, I, I just took four weeks off, um, had a big break and I'm, and I'm coming back. And so what is expected of me at this point in the season, what I expect of myself right now is very different than what I'm going to be expecting of myself and where, what we're looking for a month from now, two months from now, six months from now. Um, so, you know, right now my goal is consistency in my training. It's getting every workout in. It's just putting your head down and doing the work. It's, you know, making sure that I'm getting enough rest and eating really well. It's, um, it's the process, right? It's the process, yeah. 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 You, you mentioned the big the big picture, the, the performing well at Kona, hopefully, you know, one day winning it. But when I, you start talking about the goals for the season, you're really talking about all the little pieces that you're putting together in your training. Um, you know, you I started by talking about the, the race schedule from 2016, and you're here talking about six, five hours on, a, on your bike trainer. So it's just interesting the, the perspectives that uh, – the difference in perspective there, that it's really about the little pieces that, that build towards the big picture. It is. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, it's like every year you just layer on a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I think, you know, the interesting thing as an athlete and, and as a coach, um, I'm coached by Matt Dixon from Purple Patch Fitness. Every year you learn a little bit more about yourself and what works well and what doesn't work well. And that, also helps you grow as an athlete and evolve as an athlete and, and create a program that's, you know, much more tailored. And one of the great things is, um, you know, why I have a coach is, is he is kind of, he knows a lot more than I do. So for example, in 2015, I actually raced like 14 times or something like that. It was, I raced a lot and I had a lot of success with that. And I felt really good at the end of the season. And so going into 2016, I said, well, Matt, you know, let's just repeat that. Let's do that again. And he said, no, if you want to evolve and grow as an athlete, we need to spend more time in the, in the weight room. We need to have bigger training blocks where you're just, you know, doing some big miles, biking and running. We need to, you know, race less. And so I think, you know, on a year over year basis, you know, how you approach it and what you end up doing from a training perspective is going to change. Yeah. You can't always be the same. Great. So, you know, you mentioned your coach there. Are there other people that you, you lean on when you talk about your goals about and you're setting your plan for the year? How do you keep the, those goals ever present in your mind? Yeah. I mean, Matt is, is definitely a key, you know, a key person for me. And, and usually I'll sort of, he encourages all of his athletes to take ownership of the goals that they set and, and, and really he wants to guide them in the process of setting those goals. He's not somebody that says, this is what your goal is. And, you know, this is what it should be. You know, he'll say, what, what do you think your goals should be? And you come back and say, I think my goal should be X, Y, Z. And he'll say, mm, 
maybe you should think about it this way. So he wants you to kind of go through that process. So he is definitely a key person for me. Um, my boyfriend, Mike Lord, is also, you know, he is probably one of the most reasonable, rational people I've ever met in my life. And um, I love to, you know, bounce ideas off of him and get his thoughts and, and suggestions on things. Like I'm definitely somebody that I give, I go all in and I'm totally 100% all the time. And so he kind of brings me back to earth sometimes and, and levels me out. So, you know, for me, those are two key people. But within this whole, you know, sphere of training, I have a strength trainer, a nutritionist, Matt, who's my main coach. I have a cycling coach. I have, you know, swim advisors that I talk to. I have a chiropractor. I mean, I have this sort of team of people that all contribute to helping me perform at my best. And actually, all of those people have um, ideas and goals in mind for mm -hmm. how, you know, what I need to be doing to achieve my end goal. And so I share my goals with all of those people, and then we kind of collaborate and things evolve to create sort of this uniform vision that everybody kind of then goes off of over the course of the season. Right. So how do you kind of go from these these little uh, pieces, day day to day pieces, like, like your strength training, your five hours on the bike, to winning Kona? Like, what are the? How do you? That that's a big leap between those two. So how do you find these manageable steps in between? How do you kind of manage that? Well, interestingly, when I first started my pro career, I was very concerned about the results and. Mm -hmm. Matt always said to me, you have to focus on the process. You have to focus on the process. And if you focus on the process, the results will come. And it's actually, it's very true. And I think it takes a long time. It can take a long time to really believe in that concept. But I always believe, you know, day to day, month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year, if you really do just focus on the process, when you show up on race day, and you feel comfortable in that process that you've gone through, you should also feel comfortable that the results will, will hopefully take care of themselves. And so, yeah. you know, yeah, I I know roughly speaking what numbers I need to be hitting to, you know, to ride well in Kona. I know what pace I need to be running to run well in Kona. I know how fast I need to be swimming to get out, you know, where I think is a reasonable place to get out. I'm not a very strong swimmer. Um, so I have these wattages and paces and, you know, these concepts in my mind. And every day, like, I'm working towards consistency with those. Yeah. Um, and that's really the key for me. You know, it's, it is numbers focused to some extent because you can't control what anybody else is doing. And the only thing I can think about is, I know if I can get here, I'm going to be in pretty good shape to, to contend. And then you just, like, you can't control what else is going on around you. Right. So speaking of things that are out of control, you mentioned an injury you had in 2016. Um, you know, this is a triathlon running. These are sports where injuries are part are kind of part of the game. So when you have a setback uh, like that or something in your life that doesn't allow you to train the way you thought you were going to be, how do you decide um, it's time to change my my goal for the year? Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's really interesting. I think the mindset you take when you do have setbacks can really make or break you. You know, and I've always believed that. I I also broke my femur in 2014, which put me on the sidelines for six months. And um, I think people can either take on this mentality of "oh, poor me" and this stinks, or you can just take it as an opportunity to, um, to A, learn from what happened, and then B, potentially get stronger in other areas. So in 2014, when I, when I broke my leg, and I, I was out for a long period of time, and I couldn't do anything physically for at least the first six weeks. It was a bummer, and I was disappointed, but I decided I was going to take the opportunity to kind of live like a normal person. Um, and you know, stay up late and enjoy the foods that I really enjoy, and drink a few too many glasses of wine, and you know, do all the things that every everybody else normally does, you know, in their normal lives that I don't get to do. And um, did I want to be in that position? No, not necessarily. But it was also a good opportunity for me to 
to really just relax and, and have some balance in my life. And so I took advantage of that. And, and similarly, when I had this injury in 2016, um, it gave me a great opportunity. I couldn't run, but it gave me a great opportunity to spend a lot of time on the trainer and a lot of time in the pool. And that really actually ended up being a turning point for me in my swim, which is something I've struggled with for a long time. So, um, you know, I feel like with every setback, there's always an opportunity for something to, to be better in the future. And you really just have to identify that and start working towards it. Cool. So uh, one thing many people don't know about you is that you were one of the first pros to buy into the idea of Stride. Before Stride was even Stride, you, you ran with a, a pod in Kona. And um, you, know, you haven't, you haven't trained, been training for the past four months. You're just getting started. So what are some of the things you're looking forward to using Stride in your training? Yeah, so one of the really interesting things for me and one of the, one of the things I loved when I when I first started using the product was just actually looking at um you know what my power output was running versus what my power output was on the bike and it was so fascinating to me that um for all intents and purposes it was really quite similar similar. You know, I'm I'm have a history in of being a runner so I think that I'm a, a fairly efficient runner, and so I think um, you are going to see some differences in between bike and run based on how efficient you are in one or the other. But you know that was really fascinating for me, and it gave me this kind of other metric to be looking at besides just pace, um, which I think could be extremely helpful because things like power also associate can be associated with how efficient you are with your running stride. Um, and so that's been quite useful for me because, you know, if you're doing a, you know, if you're doing a hard workout and you're doing repeats and um, your pace is here and your power is here, there could be, you know, you, over time you might be able to see discrepancies and see where things are off and, and also be able to relate that to either your perceived effort or just generally how your legs are feeling on the day, um, thinking about, you know, how your stride is, where your foot's landing. There's just kind of another metric to, to add to all of the analysis that's done with respect to performance. Yeah, cool. Um, you know, here we are at the beginning of 2017 and everybody's making their resolutions. And I know one of the things that's close to your heart is uh, habit formation and forming good habits. Uh, you're the founder of the Habit Project. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that and how we can use that to uh, improve our lives? Yeah. So um, prior to my days of, or prior to being a professional triathlete, I, I was an investment banker and a smoker. And um, triathlon for me was sort of the stimulus and the inspiration and motivation I needed to, to make some changes in my life and start leading a, a healthier lifestyle. <laughs> and so I ended up forming the Habit Project as a way to create an online social community for people to go and kind of find their own inspiration to take their bad habits and potentially turn them into um, to positive ones and, and lead a more productive, happier, well-balanced life. So we offer tips and challenges. We provide research and articles and um, you know pictures and just really try to create a supportive community where people can go for, um, for support in, in making habit changes. So if you want to check it out, it's uh, thehabitproject.net. Yeah. So, what was uh, what do people want to keep up with you and your your season that going this year? How can people follow you and your progress? Uh, well, I've got my website sarahpampiano.com, and uh, I'm also on Instagram and Twitter as uh, Sarah Piampiano, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us about goal setting this year. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, we can all reach our top one this year. Yeah, for sure. Good luck to everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye.